It's time. We're here. Air fill up. Time to move. Beautiful day. Should be in good shape. A little bit of water to test the pumps. And yeah. Should be in good shape. And this is where we're gonna put it, but we've got a lot of work to do this year. Dad's been busy. This tree, this tree was, well, you can see it's completely dead. This one fell over on its own. It was also completely dead. He took that one down there and there because the tops were completely dead and ready to fall on the camper, which is pretty cool he took those down, but we got a hell of a pile of mess to clean up this year. That's all right, every year it's an adventure. Looks like they've been busy, that's for sure, because it don't look like this in the spring. But uh, yeah, well, we're ready to move. This is, uh, it's dry enough. I checked the driveway is good. We're ready to come in. And ideally, if I can get that done before the bugs start, which there's none yet because it's still below freezing most nights, it should be good. Pretty nice. This is the dingiest time of year where everything is gray and brown. And then a few weeks, this will just be crazy with life. And the only price to pay is a little cleanup and we're good to go. Yeah, this is nice. There is a few uh, beginnings of deer flies. A few fresh hatches this morning. <laughs> Peachy. Just a gorgeous day, too. That's dead standing left. Holy smokes, there's a pile. Wow. So much to take out. Well, on the way, got the trailer in tow, and I'm going to go pick up a cool new addition for the camp. Uh, this is going to make life a lot easier next year. Alrighty, picked up. This is what we got. Get a better look when we get it over to camp, but uh, pretty cool for a Facebook marketplace. Quick little prep on the generator to go back over. Uh, hopefully we don't need it much this year, but I've never set the valves on this and they're a little clattery. So we'll set those. You can see that it's quite loose on the exhaust side. So we'll tighten those up and we'll get a little bit better fuel economy and I'm just draining the oil out now down there and uh, give us some fresh oil. Should be in good shape. Also uh, file and gap the spark plug. It's a little on the wide side so we'll take it down a little bit and have the spec on that from the manual. If you're not familiar, the valves, there's two. One allows the air-fuel mixture into the combustion chamber and one lets it out at the appropriate times. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You want the clearance to be just enough so that they can still close and not so much that they clatter. So we also took a look at the air filter and it's actually fine. You just hold it up to the light, see if you can see through it. Got the spark plug, put it back in, uh, added a full liter of oil and then took about half of it back out. Um, that's at a little over the full mark now. And that gave it a little bit of a flush because that oil was really dirty. So it got a lot of hours last year. So this thing's doing good. This is the generator we rebuilt on the Make Me Lab channel ages ago with new inverter and I did a carb on it uh, or carb clean on it. And, and yeah, it's a, been a great little gen, three kilowatt and I paid almost nothing for it. should do for another season. So this is the kind of situation. The trailer made it through the winter really, really well so far. 
Uh, I put these bounce sheets all over the place and I've only found minimal sign that a mouse was in for a very short time. There was a tiny bit of mouse dirt here and one chunk of something they pulled out and that's it. So yeah, we're getting, <laughs> I got a lot to do, but uh, all things considered, everything came through just swimmingly. Uh, a little bit of trouble on the way out in the fall, but uh, thanks to my best friend, he helped me uh, on the way in the uh, day before yesterday. And we're in great shape. Just uh, some flies from that got in, and that's that's it. So I put all this plastic over everything, and that was a smart move. Past me was thinking, and uh, it covered everything up just beautifully. So. Yeah, got a lot of work to do, but uh, we're early. This is a week before I got the trailer last year and two weeks before I brought it up here. So, and we're, we're in good shape. So time to put the solar on the roof and yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm happy. And we end up with just a beautiful day. Leaves are going to start coming out like crazy in a week or two and things will just green up and unfortunately so will come the bugs too but uh yeah it's beautiful Well, we're here. So are the bugs, but what a beautiful morning. Got a lot of goodies with me today and a lot of work to do. Just opened up enough to get the bug juice out, but we brought one huge trailer load of goodies. We got our new generator. This is hopefully going to power our off-grid camp when uh, the solar system can't. Runs on propane and gasoline, so we'll do a little bit of a review on that and see how it goes. Brought my little top saw to try out. Uh, it seems to be working good. Chipper's back and... And we just spooked a deer. <laughs> deer usually aren't on this side. He was close. Huh. Anyway, we got a, a weed trimmer and this is the new four stroke brush cutter that we're going to use for clearing out some of this area where that deer is. Uh, I want to cut a walking path through here and restore some of this uh, area here, uh, this rock garden setup. And uh, yeah, hopefully make things real nice. Everything made the trip up just fine. Got some cool garden lights for out in the bush there. They'll look kind of neat. Can't wait to try out this generator. brought the whole form of 36, the G366 as well. Hopefully, maybe buck up that dead tree down there. That's the last of the big ones. These ones are going for saw logs. So yeah, that should be fun.
rebuilt a nice new, a new ish uh, steel FS38 weed eater. So that one stays home, and this one is now uh, good for up here. This is a good little feather light. I bought it new years ago. Uh, I've got a half a dozen weed eaters, so but the steel will work really good. This generator is so cool. Suitcase. No problem. That's awesome. An umbrella used for my home. And some old barbecue grates from my old barbecue that I saved that we'll use for the campfire for cooking. I'm going to try something different. I got this conduit, three quarter inch uh, PVC pipe, and I'm going to try running that down the side of the camper for the solar panel wiring instead of trying to drill holes through the rubber roof and introducing another leak point. They should be able to just clamp these to the side and run the cables down through it. And that'll do kind of a clean install down the outside of the camper. I think it's pretty clever. I picked up a 30 pound tank for propane. That should be significantly cheaper for running that generator than gasoline. Gasoline's $2 a liter right now. So that's very expensive. So. Uh, I figure the propane should be about half that price, so we'll see. I brought the DJI Mini drone to maybe get some aerial shots before the canopy is in full bloom. I thought that would be pretty cool. And uh, some more drinking water. Uh, I brought 30 liters of wash water, which is drinkable, but I don't drink from the tank in the trailer. I keep that water separate. I could, but... Uh, it's a lot easier to just not worry about it and just keep my drinking water separate. I brought some Ontario native species plants, some may apple and uh, this gay feather I, I'm not familiar with, but it looks like the hummingbirds will love that. But uh, also brought a citronella plant, which is uh, pretty cool. Everything's as I left it, except for the battery. The battery, oh, it's dropped now because we've got some load on it, but the uh, battery was right full when I got here. So we're at 12.3 volts with the fridge trying to catch up, hot water heaters running, lighting, bunch of stuff running right now. So yeah, not bad. Everything is in great shape. Uh, I still got some windows to clean, but uh, I'm starting off in pretty good shape compared to last year. You saw the videos last year where we brought this up from being, a, well, it wasn't in rough shape, but I got a lot done to it. Um, no major redecorating, just new bedding, new shower stuff. Um, yeah, all new bed, pretty happy with how things came out. TVs are working and uh, yeah, last weekend was the kind of first run where I stayed up for, uh, a night and uh, I was quite happy. So uh, yeah, let's get some stuff unloaded. New bug racket. These things are great for in the bedroom I found. Uh, if there's a mosquito in the middle of the night, they're really like, what are you gonna do in the middle of the night? One of these, you can just swat through the air and you'll get it. It's pretty cool. A uh, new breaker for the solar system. Uh, this is for separating the panels. Uh, I discovered I was just going to do one side. I was just going to do the hot, but I actually discovered for mobile installations to be to code ish. You've got to separate the positive and the negative on a floating ground system. So uh, why not do it there close to right? <laughs> I uh, never tried one of these, these electronic bug zappers. Because I have the inverter in the camper running all the time, we have 110. They don't draw much, but these I've used before. These are these awesome um, heated tablet things for the bug repellent. And the off ones, uh, I forget what the brand name, Kane Tire flogs them, and they work great. Well, the overseas ones fit into that as well as the overseas uh, China sourced 
repellers fit into these and I'm going to put one of these outside. The, I had similar last year and it worked good. I bought another one of these RV over odor eliminators. They do it's chlorine dioxide. I think they give off and because that has a free electron that bonds to a lot of other things to neutralize the smells. And it worked really good, but the smell came back in here. It smells like a camper again. So I'm going to try one more round of it. Walden, I've never read it. I made it through my whole life and I've never read Walden. So uh, by Thoreau, if you're not familiar, uh, I think this would be a perfect environment to try to get through that this summer. And because I want to do some research projects on the local flora and fauna, mainly flora, um, I'm going to have a little book. I, I want to learn a bit more about the bio, the biosphere here. The, the zone that I'm in is quite interesting and it's a very unique ecosystem. So I think that'll be fun. This stuff is just, it might give you ideas for your camping. Olive oil, stock back up. These damp traps, cheapest place I found is a dollar store, buck 25 and they work great in here. They keep the humidity down. It's already up to 82%, 92% outside. This this area is always right around the 90% humidity mark. So you gotta do something in your camper. And this is the cheapest I found. It's just desiccant and uh, some uh, new fridge fresh. Dollar store, all of this stuff. Dollar store is great for camp stuff. Um, dollar store size of peas and stuff is good for me when I'm up here by myself. It's the perfect size for me. Uh, it's not quite two servings for like my wife and I. So some more coffee, mate, because I always keep forgetting to bring the creamer. And some O-rings from dollar store, 50 piece. Uh, I didn't have O-rings up here. Looks like I got two of them, one for at home. Some screws and stuff. Oh, this is the coolest thing. Check these out. This is the coolest thing out of this whole haul. I got these kick-ass notebooks. Um, really neat. Uh, I love this Find Your Wild one. I'm going to finally start keeping a diary up here of when I came, what the temperature is, and kind of what I did and stuff. Uh, I wish I would have done that in my young life. I did when we were staying in the cabin when I was little, but those journals are long gone. And uh, yeah, I think it'd be fun to keep a journal. And plus I'm videoing for you guys. Some sink stoppers for the kitchen sink some uh, garden twine. This stuff's super handy in lots of situations, but I'm gonna use this. There's raspberries out there that are all overgrown and I'm gonna clean them out and I've got some bamboo um, stands, so to speak, and I'm gonna tie it all up and try and get those raspberries turned around and working good. Some screws, washers. These I'll, I'll put all into their own kit. Um, new, new lock for various things. New water shoes for my kayak because the mice chewed my other ones and uh, I think it would be good to have two pairs up here. And some barbecue sauce because yes. Jam because every time I open a jam and then I have to take it home to refrigerate it, I forget to bring another one up. And some jerk seasoning and some Cajun seasoning. Love that stuff. I love seasonings. I like to cook and have decent at it. So yeah. But wait, there's more. Uh, Windex. Well, Brillo brand. I couldn't find a, a Windex to bring for some reason. Um, one of these dollar store trays to put all the random stuff in. Uh, this shrink wrap for putting over the log chipper, the, the wood chipper, when I transport it, it keeps the water out of things. Because the chute is hard to cover up with the tarp. Some Nescafe because sometimes I'm lazy, particularly in the afternoons. I don't want to make coffee. Check this out. I got this Coleman coffee maker last trip and I should have done this last year. That's way better than the percolator. Uh, way easier to clean up. And I also have a mocha, uh, whatever you call those things, a mocha maker or whatever for on top of the stove. And it, the grounds are just a hell of a mess. And Water is at a premium here because I truck in all the water. So I don't want to waste any water if I can help it. So that that works great. You can just pull the filters out. So WD-40 because I didn't have any up here. 
these are awesome. These smell good. These work good. Whatever the from the Dollarama. Uh, I don't know what name brand they are, but they're great. I have these at the sink. I have a, a set of these in the basement of the trailer where my tools and stuff are at all times. And whenever I get into poison ivy or stuff, which is all the time up here, I quickly use these. And so far, it seems to get most of it off before it sets into my skin and causes a reaction. So pretty cool. Um, palm olive. I try to use. I try to use biodegradable soap here. Uh, that's what I mainly use, but it really sucks for cleaning dirty dishes, like stuff with grease on it. So I wanted something just for a little bit of grease fighter, but I don't use that very often. Some mouthwash, because the other stuff looks funny. And I got myself a new jar light, because I love this jar light. This is the coolest night light ever. This thing in here, it's on a, it's not, intrusive it just it just glows like a little flickering for flame and on the table that's just awesome in the night and uh yeah dollar store still had them uh, another one same 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 thing and uh yeah i'm happy about that just replaced all these rusted out grates in the bottom of the fire pit we run an above ground fire pit here that way there's almost no smoke I put these barbecue grates in that I brought from home. That's just perfect. They're nice and heavy duty cast of some form. That should be perfect. And what I figured out, hoping that this would work when I left home, check this out. I think I can make that work right there as a little cooker, or a bun warmer or whatever. Then we already have a topper for this, but we'll give it a try. Perfect. That'll do. Go down just a little bit further. There. That should be removable. And this, that's a perfect fit. Excellent. We have a little cooker. Yep. Perfect. Let's see if we've got enough juice to go down and get the trail camera I set up. Just the other side of this monster oak, my favorite tree on the property. Just bury me under this thing when I die. This will be perfect. Spread my ashes right there. What a happy spot to live out eternity, eh? Be all right with that. Set up some chairs down at the river last week. The ground's too soft to use them. They sink right in. River's up a little bit again. And yeah, just beautiful. All right, here's my trail cam. Wonder if we got anything. I guess we'll find out. The view through here is one of my favorites in the property too. I used to spend a lot of time back in there when I was a kid. There's big high, um, I don't even know what they are. Some native, well, it could be invasive species, but like seven feet tall and I used to make forts in it. And they're, uh, yeah, I found out they, uh, there's, they sting too. So I developed a rash to those, but it didn't stop me. I kept doing it anyway, because it's fun and uh yeah lots of dead standing left but we're doing pretty good this year one there to take down yet 
and then two here. And then hopefully we get a few more years before these other ones are ready to go. I don't know what dad's going to do. He's talking about pulling them down, so I'll maybe try and replace them. I suggested I replace them with willows, and I, I'd like to. I started uh, growing some weeping willow branches at home, so uh, we'll see. If they agree, then that's where I'll put them. That'd be pretty cool, eh, to just have weeping willow along here. And, and my idea was that willows have a pretty extensive root system and they're well suited to basically being underwater and they're water loving species. So it would help with the erosion once these are gone. Cause once these are gone, we gotta leave the root ball in place, I hope. Otherwise this is just gonna erode away the way the river comes in here. It's just gonna chew this up. We're gonna lose our frontage here, but uh, yeah, and get some willows growing in there. and. We won't. Lots of tracks. Raccoon. Deer. And what are you? Deer. Small, tiny deer. Maybe, uh, maybe the offspring of that one we spooked earlier. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Should hopefully get a nice sunset tonight. I think it's supposed to clear out and maybe we can come down here and enjoy the sunset. That'd be cool. Maybe take a time lapse. Success. New generator runs on propane. Happy about this. Uh, batteries are charged in the camper from my 100 watt solar panel, but uh, this is, well, it looks like uh, about 300, 400, 500 watts thereabouts going in, so half a kilowatt. Um, yeah, there we go. One more chore down. We keep on plugging away. Pretty happy about progress. It's not even lunchtime. And uh, yeah, we can get a saw out today. We can get a brush cutter out today. We can start doing raspberries today. Clean up all this mess today. Whew. That's fun. One thing I don't think I've showed, tucked away in the back here, I have my battery chargers and anytime I'm running the generator, I'm charging batteries, double A's, triple A's, my drill and my electric screwdriver, as well as my future um, LiPo pump system and my searchlight battery. Uh, it's all in here, but uh, this will also be running anytime we have a good solar day. So uh, once I get the solar panels on the roof, this will be powered exclusively by solar. And yeah, lots of spare. These are just El Cheapo uh, Interstar batteries and, and some Panasonics. They're all from the dollar store. They're not great, but uh, they're plenty good enough. And up here where it's quite a long way to go to a store, um, I always have my own self-sustaining batteries, which is pretty cool. Also check this out. I've only been here just a little over an hour and the freezer temp is already at minus 14. The fridge is at eight and if I go ahead and put my ice packs in from my cooler, uh, I can boost that rate to I'm done. It's chilled and all my food is already chilled. So this fridge, it works awesome. So I'll move it down from coldest uh, to about midway later on because it basically freezes everything. But this wireless display that I got from Amazon, uh, I showed in a previous video, I love this for stats for nerds. I love it. And my panel, everything is working. My electrical panel is working just wonderful. Smoke detectors, brought another fire extinguisher, uh, auxiliary smoke detectors. I forgot to bring another one, but I have that one, one in the bedroom and one uh, both down there for LPG and smoke. So should be good, should be pretty safe. Cool. Just about to shut off the generator, so I'm gonna switch over the GoPros that were, the GoPro batteries that were charging over here, over onto this Blitzwolf uh, folding panel, 20 watt solar charger. So this thing cooks along pretty good at midday sun, which we're about to get right now. And that'll be just perfect. And that'll keep the GoPro batteries topped off while I try and do some videoing for you guys. Just like that. We're charging free from the sun and it's completely overcast at the moment. And what are we getting? Five volts. 
100 milliamps and that isn't even aimed right. So if I flip this around and do a little bit better job on the aiming, bet you we can get quite a bit more than 100 milliamps out of this. And we'll just let that go and it's free, free from the sun. Just flip that around and we're up, we're at 4.8 volts, probably a little dragged down because they're charging and 270 milliamps. So it was actually at 320 a second ago and it's still, there's no sun, it's still completely overcast. So uh, once that sun comes out, it's gonna top these off in no time. That was just absolutely wonderful. That's a good little piece of kit for, uh, for the amount you get out of it. For 20 watts, that's pretty impressive for a little panel and it seems to do it, pretty cool. So what I'm thinking is it's quarter to 12 now. And before it gets too hot, I think we'll buck this up or at least a few pieces of it. It's all rotten and I don't think my dad can use it for anything but campfire wood. It's yeah, it's right, right rotten to the core. So, uh, hmm, probably good enough for campfire wood. I'm just almost probably want to wait till he has the tractor and just dump ah uh, yeah nah let's cut it up let's buck it up then we can move it wherever easy we don't have tractor up here right now so yeah let's do that let's see if i remembered to bring my favorite saw i did this has quickly become my favorite I'll put the long bar back on uh, because I don't have to bend over as much. Uh, it's easier on my back. I have a bit of a history with spinal issues. So, uh, and it's, it's a lighter saw, but enough power. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just learning to love it. it uh, it's definitely my favorite. I, have a, I like the MS-261 steel I have too, but uh, this thing, this thing really holds its own pretty well. And uh, this proved out to be a pretty good saw but it doesn't have a lot of hours on it. There's a brand new bar on it. I have lots of spare bars. I bought a whole pile when Wolf's Forma had a deal. Is that free shipping and a really good price on the bars at one point. So I got a whole wall of them at home in the garage, which is kind of nice. All different assorted lengths and multiple chains. And everything I could need pretty much. And a hole in my glove. These are brand new gloves. Well, that sucks. That was not good. All right, you don't need to watch me do this. I'll get suited up and maybe I'll warm up the saw first. I remember this one needs a tune. It was, I think last time I ran it was in pretty cold weather. So we'll maybe give it a little warm up, a little tune while we're running it. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. Should be fun. Hasn't been started. Did I start it this year? I don't think I did. Hasn't been started in a while anyway.
makes chips. Look at that. Not bad. Chain's still sharp. Makes her work on that. That's that's dense stuff. That's heavy duty oak. This is actually not nearly as rotten as I thought. I hope he didn't want that for a saw log. I expected that to be rotten to the core. It's not. Je trouve mon clé. Slide some right up on here, and bugs will carry me out, and we should be all set. If you've ever slung oak around, that stuff's no joke. That's heavy. That is dense, dense wood. But uh, now my dad can just come right up here and back his trailer or his truck in and load it up. Pretty cool. And just like that, we're looking a little better. A bunch of bark to clean up. That's one down. And I already bucked up the one over there for dad. The last weekend I was here and that's it. Uh, the rest of his are going for saw logs. So yeah, that one's too punky on the outside. I'm pretty sure I didn't do an oopsie. I don't think they, I'm pretty sure he didn't want that for a saw log. It'll make for good, good firewood though. The center's still good. Just the outside, a couple of inches are punky. And yeah, brush pile I loaded up last week. And uh, I'm gonna, I'm still gonna pick away at that. I'm still gonna mulch a bunch of that. Um, it's just uh, my dad's wife put it all in a big pile, and it's a snarling rat's nest. I can't, I can't get it apart. So I'm gonna pick a few pieces out though, and uh, make some more mulch. And I'll use some of this bark for mulch. And then we're gonna mulch our little trail over behind our hummingbirds here that are probably specks on the camera, but there's four or five of them always at the feeders. They're just happy. So yeah, we'll cut a walking trail back through there and have a nice little enjoyable trail through the land when the bugs aren't uh, aren't bad. And uh, it's going to be fun. It's, uh, there's some high ground there that I can follow through and stay on the high ground and then come down by the river. And uh, yeah, it's a long way to the property line. <laughs> a very long way. 
That deserves a lunch. Good old hot dogs. Geez, even they're expensive now. It's crazy. That's a good bit of work done. I'm happy with that. That's more than I expected to get done by lunch. So that's a lot done by lunch, actually. So we'll get the top the top handle saw out and kick up some of this brush after lunch. If it doesn't rain on us, it's getting kind of dark. And uh, yeah, should be good. Um, Maybe I'll relax for a little bit. I'm pretty happy with how things are coming along. Woodpeckers in the distance, hammering away. This was a barbecue I got last summer. I don't know whether I showed it in a video. In really good shape. Got it for next to nothing. It's perfect. Makes it easy to make make hot dogs instead of having to light the fire and piddle around. Just wonderful. Just perfect. What a wonderful way to have a lunch. Little Yellowstone on the TV, because why not? And yeah, I'm starved. With a quick little fire. Test out the new grates. They work just lovely. Let's see how this this fire has very, very, very little smoke. Actually, that's pretty wet wood, but uh, that's more smoke than usual. But uh, yeah, it's just perfect. Nice and warm. It's actually uh, cool today. It's still only like 16 degrees, so time to relax. And we start the work over there. Well, we've got just a little bit of a, a breeze, ever so little. Uh, I'd go up to the evergreens and see if we can get the trail cam SD card from there. That was pretty cool on the other one to see the coyote on this side of the river, which uh, I have never seen before. They usually stick to the far side, so it's good to know they're on this side too. And then uh, the deer and raccoon, that's pretty standard fare for around here. But uh, yeah, bush is alive, a lot of mosquitoes, but they're actually not that... Not that bad. Bug spray seems to be fine and they're not biting that bad with that on, so. Knock on wood. Okay, they're bad now. <laughs> There's but a thousand of them following right behind me and yeah, they don't care about bug spray. These guys are immune. <laughs> so we'll go into the cedars here. Somewhere along here, I put a trail camera if it's still in here, that somebody didn't notice it and grab it, I hope. Nope, it's here. We good. Ouch, getting bit. I'm gonna get this and get the heck out of here. Drop the SD card right in the poison ivy. How perfect is that? So these mosquitoes didn't get the message. These ones, uh, they don't care about bug spray. They are the full Greenock Swamp mosquitoes. Anyway, that was a fun little venture, but they're a lot more fun in the fall when the mosquitoes are gone. That's super cool. I'm gonna take this back out and put it out there. That was neat to see. I don't know if that's the same doe the whole time or not, but that's pretty cool. I'm I'm really happy with those game cams. That was a steal of a deal at the local Canadian Tire. That was pretty cool. I don't know if that's the same doe every day there or not, but got her coming and going. Um, I'm gonna go put the card back in right now. Before I forget because uh, that was pretty <laughs> choice spot I picked. She wanders right in front of it and that's kind of what I thought. There always was a game trail there 
So yeah, win. Very cool. If you can see this tree here, that's pretty a cool one because the woodpeckers use it year after year after year and they've just got it chewed to a pulp. It's been rotten a long time, but the backside of it is completely missing. <laughs> it's pretty neat. It doesn't even make a loud noise anymore. It's just gone punky. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. The woodpeckers love that spot. Okay, that's hard work, but check this out. I got most of 30 years worth of dumping of uh, brush and crap here cleared out and kind of the same. And I managed to get through all the raspberries without a single fatality. I took off all the dead suckers like this that are just dried out and dead and pruned them all up and there's only Oh no, did we? Okay, one. Okay, I killed one. <laughs> but the rest of these are still standing. And I've got these cool bamboo shoot things that I'll put in here to give them support. And I cleared the limbs here. So my trailer blocks the morning sun now for them, but we can give them afternoon sun and uh, they should they should do well. I don't remember who planted these. I'm assuming my grandfather, uh, but there's quite a little thicket of them and uh, yeah, I got it all cleared out. Uh, I got to do a little bit more clear out underneath them and then I'll mulch underneath them and that'll keep the vines from growing up and choking them. But a lot of them were getting choked out by little ashes and little, I don't even know, some of scrub brush stuff that I don't know the name of. And uh, I got them all cleared out. So this, uh, should be a good little raspberry patch again. A little bit of needed attention and then I'll bush hog all of this out and all of this out and use my cool mulch and turn this back into a, a cool little garden area and just keep working at it and then start cutting right through there for a walking trail. And this is gonna be just beautiful. I'm quite content with this. I'm excited. I wish I could have done this while my grandparents were still alive when uh, but I got busy with my wind turbine career and it was just nuts. I did as much as I could up here, but uh, yeah, my grandfather got sick and that was right at the time where I was on the road all the time and it, it just killed me because I was, I was actually up here doing the driveway and stuff for him when he started getting sick. Uh, I had cancer when he started getting really bad the last time and I did a lot of the maintenance up here that I could, but uh yeah, then I then I literally wasn't in the country, so uh, I, I just couldn't keep up with it. And I think that I think it's I don't think he was too happy. Um, 
it's really too bad that it had to be those two things, but uh, that coincided in my life. I really wish I would have been able to spend a little bit more time with them and my grandmother at the end, but I was like building what career I have now. And uh, you guys don't hear much about that side, but uh, it was pretty important that I had to do my time when I did it. There, there was no other option. You either go fast and hard or you burn out and you don't get anywhere. So I went pretty fast and hard and I did all right. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, I missed out on a lot of, a lot of things up here. But uh, I'm back now. I'm back. So uh, hopefully, hopefully I can get some lots of years up here. I'm pretty happy with it. Look at this view. Look at that. And that's something. It's not even that great of a day out and it's just, it's just awesome. Just beautiful. Try my best to share with you guys. Well, here's where we got to. I uh, still got a heap there. Most of it's ancient, ancient stuff, but check this out. Pretty cool. I think, uh, I think my grandparents would be proud of this. Um, it's not done, but it's a good first step, I think. And then now I can get the lawnmower through without sucking up raspberry bushes. And uh, it's gonna be kind of like a little thicket of them. I'm sure there's better ways, but they're they kind of all haphazard all over the place. So uh, this is the best I can do for now. I'm just going to keep working on this and clearing it out. A couple ash trees here I'll grow up and uh, a couple I'll transplant in. I think uh, once I clear that, we'll put one right there and yeah, some out there. But obviously all of this has to be cleared out too. So yeah, happy, happy. This is uh, like, I want to, I want to balance it with the original, like, I don't want this paving stones and stuff. This is as as intrusive as I'm going to get with a little bit of mulch around the edges, but the rest is just going to be that that foliage is going to stay pretty much as it is other than some little areas I might clear out for some of the native species that I'm going to put in those may apples and stuff. And uh, just to give them a chance to get propagating and hopefully uh, yeah, hopefully take off, but all those ferns and stuff I'm not going to mess with those. I want those to grow. Those are quite beautiful. So, and uh, fiddleheads in the spring. Cool. Even at uh, 16 degrees or whatever it is today, it's it's hot when you get slugging in there. It's a sweaty, sweaty job, but uh, I'm really happy with how it came out. This is, this is cool. And the hummingbirds are at the feeders, if you can see them. Yeah, super happy little birds. I'm glad my grandma brought those around. I, I hope they're not dependent on me, but they don't seem to be. They were here for a few years when I wasn't feeding them. So, yeah. Now I gotta clean up all my mess. <laughs> we couldn't resist putting the 366 to work just a tiny bit more. So check this out. I finished clearing this. And I cut, there was one stumpy little ash that was never going to amount to anything. So got him cleared out. And then I cleared all this with the brush cutter. Lots of poison ivy, so I got a little bit more work to do. And I made it all the way to here, which is like not far from the camper. But check this out. We're into the glade that was made by a uh, tree that came down many, many moons ago, if I remember right, and then this one's dead too. It's going to come down soon, but uh, now we can cut. I think what I'll do is cut along the glade here and then loop back into the bush, into the hardwoods there. Won't that be cool? Yeah, but it's the beginnings of a trail. The first trail on Project Camp. Uh, we've cut trails. We, we've got trails here, but they haven't been maintained in 20 years. So we haven't needed to because we haven't been logging it. But uh, the walking trails? Yeah, how cool is that? Right out my back door. Oh, and I've been cutting all the vines. These choking vines that are killing everything. 
these vines that climb up these ashes and just choke them out. I've been nipping them off, but I got a lot more to do here. There's plenty more. This one's this one's alive and choking it out. See, actually, this one's dead. No, it's alive. Ah, there you go. And it it just latches on and chokes everything to death. Just evil, evil, but not hard to deal with. You can see all the leaves dying from ones that I cut last week when I was here. They're wilting. And uh, yeah, I did a whole pile of them through here, all through there. But uh, yeah, super happy with this. My first beginnings of the trail. Check it out. It's like a little hidden entrance. Happy about that. Well guys, I'm gonna call it at that. I am gonna sit down and eat this wonderful meal. Made myself a steak, a couple of potatoes. Put some Yellowstone on, and then I'm going to have a hot, hot shower. One of the bonuses of uh, this camp is uh, having hot running water for days like this. Cheers, guys. Well, it's morning. I uh, had a great sleep last night. I had to have all the windows closed, so I didn't hear the coyotes or anything. It was a quiet night, but uh, just enjoying some coffee and getting ready to go home. It's amazing the transformation of this bush in just a matter of a couple of weeks. This was completely barren a few weeks ago, uh, two and a half weeks ago. And this this comes about and just, just boom, an explosion of life. It's pretty cool. Hummingbirds are pretty happy with their feeders here. <laughs> and yeah, I wrote in my journal. That was pretty cool. Uh, first entry in the new the new journal so I think I'll make that a regular thing I'll start on Walden sometime maybe when I get some vacation days up here and then I'm gonna start IDing a couple of plants uh, not much for cell service up here so I can't use the Google app but uh, I have a pretty good idea what I'm looking for there's there's a few key indicators if you go to the back of one of these books, they have usually a pictorial glossary. <laughs> you don't even know what a glossary is anymore. Uh, the leaf arrangement is kind of the key and that'll help you out a lot. And then the leaf structure and the other leaf structure here. I think there's a different name for this though, but this will get you to the right area and ID the plant pretty good. And this one's unique to, to this area here, um, not far from Georgian Bay. This is a, we're kind of a, an interesting biozone here. We have a, a mix of boreal and, and uh, I don't even, don't even know what the other one is, to be honest, but low level swamp land too. This is all swamp out here. But uh, yeah, that's my little trail cut through. And uh, I'm going to come back next weekend, I hope, and continue with that. But for now, I'm going to make some breakfast and uh, shut her down.